started recording. Hello friends, good morning. Uh, in this video, what we will do is, in continuation with the cloud computing basics, I will explain what is infrastructure as a service. Okay, this is last class. Let me go to... You. Okay, in this video, what we will do is, let's understand what is infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and software as a service. What it is? When it comes to cloud cloud offerings, uh, public cloud platforms will offer you the services with these names. right? Before that, let's go back to the traditional uh, data center way and how the services will be offered let's understand that first and then we'll come to uh, cloud public cloud platforms and we'll explain uh, what is infrastructure as a service what is platform as a service and software as a service okay let's, let's say for example you take any traditional data center any traditional data center what it has what it consists of Initially, let's say servers. Who all they can supply? HP, Dell, Cisco, IBM, Supermicro. Alright? And then storage systems. It comes to IBM, Dell EMC. Who else? Uh, NetApp. Pure storage and so on right when it comes to networks networking say for example cisco juniper right these are the few vendors who offer you the required hardware and what you'll do in a traditional data center way you go and talk to any of these vendors right and get the devices in your data center and as a DC owner or a enterprise owner you have a control on these devices and you manage it how you want right and over the period of time what happened managing these many vendors has become an headache for enterprises then what what these vendors they come up with a plan called as same data center will be there okay and there's a tradition from traditional way to converged infrastructure Right? What it means? You'll have a same rack in the data center and you have a computing which is servers, you have a networking and storage with from different different vendors or a single vendor and customer can talk to customer can talk to one mediator who is responsible to manage this so that customer has a minimum interaction with all these different vendors uh, or customer headache will be minimized coordinating with the multiple vendors and get the solution when whenever they are facing some issues okay and there is another concept called hyperconverged as well when it comes to hyperconverged, you'll have rack, you'll have computing and network. That's it. This computing will have embedded storage and integrated like this. Okay. Uh, one of the example here it is. Okay. 
free block I'm not sure if it is still in production or not if I go to Dell EMC V, v block images so they'll supply this kind of device it has EMC storage it has Cisco Cisco servers and Cisco switches or Dell servers and Cisco switches okay when it comes to hyperconverged hyperconverged the company purely running with hyperconverged based on hyperconverged what will happen server storage sorry server network storage everything is embedded into one device that is selling via Newtonics it's purely based on vSAN concept that's a different story okay so this is how the traditional operations will work and you in in all of these areas you have a control on your hardware okay well, directly or indirectly engineer has a control on their infra infrastructure hardware okay so let's move on to cloud okay let me see I'll just remove this go to Google let's understand what it is infrastructure as a service and so on go to images let's take this picture we'll just copy this one copy let's paste it Yeah, here it is. If you look at this picture on premise, imagine all the three concepts are embedded into on premise. Whatever the concepts that we discussed uh, earlier uh, converged, hyper converged, and traditional infrastructure that everything comes under on premise infrastructure. Okay, you manage what you manage networking, storage, servers. What else? You manage network devices. You manage storage, you manage servers. On top of server, you, if you have a virtualization platform, you manage that as well. On top of that, you have a traditional operating systems and any middleware, runtime applications, data, and front end applications. Everything will be managed by you or your team or your organization. The meaning of you manage means either enterprise or customer will manage themselves. Okay, when it comes to infrastructure as a cloud, uh, sorry, infrastructure as a service within cloud. Okay, so let's take AWS or Azure or GCP, whatever. When it comes to infrastructure as a service, okay, others manage means what it means, others means these vendors, they manage networking devices storage devices servers and on top of that the virtualization platform is also managed by these vendors only okay you don't have any control on these components the graded components and when it comes to infrastructure as a service you can manage your operating system and on top of that you can install a middleware or database or front end or web application whatever and you can manage that part that is why it is mentioned as you manage as a customer you manage one two three four five this blue ones you will manage and the gray ones you'll, you don't have any control when you are using any of these platforms okay L just just to demonstrate this example what I will do I'll just power on my server okay and meanwhile I'll go to any one portal let me go to Azure okay. always use two factor authentication that will help you to protect 
still waiting for uh, yes. Zero eight. Four zero seven. I'm sorry. Here you go. Virtual machines. Create a virtual machine. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you fill out the seven tabs and finish, you you'll get the virtual machine along with the username and password, and you're ready to go. And you really don't know where it is deployed, or on which hardware, or on which hypervisor. You don't have any control right but when it comes to infrastructure as a service this is how you manage your virtual machines within Azure similarly you have uh, options in AWS you have uh, options in Google Cloud okay GCP console Compute VM instances again. Same, I don't have a building enabled, so I can create the instances here, right? Also, same with the AWS console.aws. Another two factor authentication. Okay, here you go. Instance launch instance. Which operating system? Let's take Windows. You just fill out this. Oh, sorry. Take a size of the VM next. You just fill out these details, and then add a storage and launch the instances. You will get your virtual machine ready. Okay. And three different public cloud platforms. You have GUI options where you can simply fill out a couple of <coughs> text code, text fields and you can simply get the virtual machines then when, when, it, when it comes to traditional way how it works I'll log into the ESXA host okay I'll create a VM custom and then fill out these columns and then I'll get the virtual machine right I have a control on hardware I have a control on storage where you can go to configuration storage I have a control on storage and I have control on networking as well right this is this is how a traditional virtualization platform works okay so when it comes to platform as a service means you are let's say imagine you have a problem with managing these as well okay so what they will do these public cloud platforms they will build a system for you let's say for example you want a SQL but this is for testing purpose only let's say imagine this is for testing purpose only you just need a DB dummy db empty db that needs to be integrated with your front end development application and for that you really don't want to 
go with the traditional options you really don't want to go with the infrastructure options whereas in you'll get a server and you log into the server and install sql sql database application and then create a db and then assign it to uh, specific application and provide the connection strings and all so what you can do simply when it comes to platform as a service public cloud offers platform as a service means they'll have a server in the back end that you don't know how they will maintain and they'll also install database on top of it SQL DB is already installed okay and what they will do how much size of the database you require they'll ask you they'll simply create one DB and for this DB it has username and password you can simply log in and manage and you just pay for this part you don't need to pay for server no need to pay for up SQL DB licenses and backend this is VM right and backend physical server virtualization platform and there is a hardware right so in this others will manage this means these vendors one two three four five six seven all these things they will manage only the front-end application how you want to integrate with your development or integrate with your application that part you have to manage majorly used for developers if they want to integrate their code with the database or what all the other examples for platform as a service let's see okay platform as a service what the what he's saying Okay. When it comes to platform as a service, AWS Elastic Beanscan, Beanstack, and what else? OpenShift. SQL DB is not mentioned here, but that comes under platform as a service. AWS RDS is also comes under platform as a service. You really don't manage the servers. You'll just manage the uh, DB. Okay. And last one. What is the last one? everything will be managed by vendor you just use it what they offer simply uh, Google Drive simply Google Drive I don't know what it is how they will deploy it how they will manage it so only the thing I know is I, I whenever I'll create a Google account Gmail account or a Google account I'll get a 15 GB free space and I have one application which I can download on my laptop or desktop and provide my credentials that will automatically sync whatever the files I will put it on the drive that will automatically sync synced into the Google Drive in the cloud. This is one of the service what they offer that you can consider as a software as a service. You really don't need to manage anything, no need to consider developing anything or no need to uh, use it, no need to modify anything it's just a service which they offer you can simply use it the example is Google Drive as I said and also let's go to what he's saying Google Apps Salesforce Dropbox Zendesk Slack this stuff All right I hope this will help you to understand what is uh, what is as a service components and what is traditional operations and also a couple of other options are there let me go to my blog somewhere I've written okay It is yeah. <coughs> Let's close this out. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service. There is concept called serverless computing. That's something different, or where you will simply execute the code, and that will give you the expected outcome of your business requirement. And there is a network as a service, 
data as a service, backend as a service, everything as a service, some of the terms that they are commonly using. But majorly when it comes to public cloud, these are the few, few services what they offer. And in next coming sessions, how you deploy the virtual machine in infrastructure as a service. And when it comes to platform as a service, I'll show you how you can deploy the DB simply and connect it to any other application how that works and software service as I explained is fairly simple you can take an example as a Google Drive right okay that's all in this video thank you if you like this video please comment in the comment section thank you